What do people want to know about me that they don't know about me? I mean, I guess people know I love animals. We usually take in any stray animals. We save animals and we want to kind of turn this place into more of a farm than it already is, a little bit more of that. We have a horse that is in a stable nearby, so we want to bring that horse here and put her in the field. Um, maybe want to get a pig. But what else do people want to know about me? I don't know. I, my life is pretty much an open book. Maybe too much so. I have some people from time to time tell me at shows, like, you give too much away, you should keep a little bit. But I, I mean, like I said, people don't know really what my politics are. They can assume, but I don't talk about any of that stuff just because, you know, this is all about making shit. I just want to keep making shit. Well, here, at, in, here in my little world, I have Brett. Brett McAfee is my assistant. He's been my assistant now for about two years, and he's got his own channel called Skull and Spade, and he's doing really well. He's got a really loyal following he developed. He's got a great style, really original, and he uh, has this uh, sort of comic book nerd, affectionately, uh, pirate of the Caribbean kind of thing going on, and he's really doing well with that. And he's a really big blacksmith, so he, he inspires me. He blacksmiths way more often than me, so I, I, like I'll be doing something like, am I doing this right, am I doing this right? So he kind of guides me through that a little bit. and. Uh, Taylor is my girlfriend who makes furniture and she's sort of the, I call her the property manager of this place. And whenever we do classes, she's the one who basically produces those classes. She does it all. She knows I'm too much of a curmudgeon to get involved in the nitty gritty of that stuff. So she handles it all. And um, she's also the animal wrangler. She gets the animals here. And uh, then there's Brandon, that's Taylor's assistant, but he's just a young kid and willing to learn anything. He's a welder and he's getting better as the time goes on because he's doing it more. Like I've said a hundred times, you gotta just keep doing the same thing over and over, you get good at it. Um, what else? Yeah, that's it. So it's me and Taylor, Brandon and, and Brett. Um, uh, advice to machinists is, my advice to machinists would be, don't be afraid of three phase anymore. It definitely was a limitation for many years and now it's so much easier to overcome with, with products like the AMP and companies like American Rotary solving this problem for small shops all around. And that's the thing, I think the society or, or our American new revolution is going in the way of like guys like me that aren't going to get a tremendous complex, aren't going to go into full-on manufacturing, are making specialty items like my razor blades and like my ice picks. And we're not going to get three-phase from the pole. Who can afford that? You can't really get it from the pole. So we can get great machines, small production machines from, in, from you know, the the post-war era that are still in service. We can buy them, bring them to our shops in our backyard. And with stuff like the AMP, products like the AMP, we could turn them on and we could become a small little shop that actually produces some really good high quality stuff. And, and that's what seems to be happening in America right now, uh, is this little mini, I guess mini post-revolution, post-industrial revolution, I don't know what the hell to call it. But it's you know, the YouTube generation now guys making stuff in their garage and developing some really cool bespoke products. It's just amazing. And, uh, so my advice to machinists would be just go for it and don't be afraid. Like, like I've said it seven times already, don't be afraid to break end mills. That's been my biggest fear is I'm going to break an end mill. Uh, you know what? You burn it out, break it, you learn the better feed speeds. Buy used end mills from garage sales and flea markets and eBay. And this way it gives you a little bit more of a leeway when you're ready to spend $80 on that, you know, five flute email. Uh, when you're ready to spend 80 bucks on that five flute, half inch, such and such, then you know you're better prepared to use it. So burn out used end mills before you buy new ones. I guess what I, what I enjoy most is discovering new techniques. And for instance, uh, woodworking falls into that quite a bit because I just built the canoe, which we'll probably go take a look at. And uh, I'm not done yet, but I'm, I'm well, well over the hump. And I'm really happy with the results that I got as far as making. There's a lot of things I would change if I had a chance to go back again. But like I've always told my students, I used to teach, I taught for 25 years. I tell my students, make it again. This is great, awesome, now make it again. And they look at me like I'm crazy. It's like, make it again, that's how you get good at it, make it again. Look at what you don't like about this and correct it in the next version. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do with the canoe. As soon as I wrap this one, I'm gonna start building another one. And it's kind of like a, making a canoe is, is very relaxing. You can go listen to a podcast, do the few things you need to do while you work on it, and, uh, and just move it along every 
every day, just moving along a couple of more little things. And I started in May, now we're in the first week of October. And I'll be done probably within 10 days. I think I'll be done, ready for the water. So, <laughs> making knives. Making knives is definitely a, a trend then. And, and it, there's so much to it, it seems so simple, but it is a chemistry and it is a, it is a science taking that piece of steel and getting it to where it needs to be as far as the physical shape and then the uh, the metallurgy part of it and getting it hardened and sharpened. That's that's a bit of a struggle for me, but like I said in my previous phrase, you gotta keep doing it. Yeah, one of my favorite parts about everything that encompasses all this is meeting new people. And it might sound hokey, but when I go to these shows and I don't leave at exactly four o'clock and I end up hanging out and saying hello and goodbye to every single person that wants to meet me, people say to me, don't you, like you really, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm like, no, this is my time. My time is here. This is what I enjoy. I really do enjoy meeting people and finding out their story and finding out, you know, their life changing decisions they made you know later in life it's really inspiring to me and so this is why I do this is to meet new people it, it, it's been it's been an amazing byproduct of why I do this is that I get to meet new people get to go to shows and go to places and see things I never otherwise would have seen <laughs>